Hey guys, welcome back to Max playing Dawn of War Unification. Today I have a faction guide for you for the Thousand Suns, the Sinchi uh, Sandy Boys of Sinch, <laughs> Chaos Space Marines uh, with the Chaos God of Sinch. Um, they are your warp sorcerers, you could say. They have a lot of abilities and uh, sorcerers and a few demons and stuff. Play a, a lot different to your standard Space Marine, and that's where a lot of people are let's say confused that they uh, I hear a lot that uh, people just say that thousand suns are weak and they need buffs and everything um, and most of the time I dis disagree with it I played them um, a bit myself now and in a one-on-one -on -one PvP setting and and whatnot they are really strong don't have the strongest late game and there is um, where a lot of people where the complaints come from, I can understand them uh, standard now that in a late game fight or in a 3v3 or whatnot where you where the, the, the late game fights are really hectic and you don't have the micro all the time to use all their abilities if you have a full full army then they can feel a little weak because you don't have the time to maneuver around your enemy and whatnot so they are not your I run in your face kind of faction so that's why they are probably uh, considered weak by some people but in a in a one-on-one -on -one setting where you have the space the time um, to use the abilities to maneuver uh, about your enemy and use the strength of this faction they are very well rounded only needing probably a few more late game um, options to make them viable in tier 3 and tier 4 more I would say but this is a just my thoughts in the beginning. Um, we will jump now into the safe game I've prepared so we get into the details. And here we are in the safe game where we <laughs> I always start with a little overview um, of what a faction looks like. And as always as well we start off with resources and unit caps. The resources as you see are your standard resources, requisition and power. The acquisition of these resources is also pretty standard. You capture points, build listening posts for requisition and you need plasma generators and I think they are called different here you see like rune scribe construct for power and they are also yeah, your thermo plasma generators uh, there is some key difference there um, we start with requisition the requisition is pretty standard um, 6 for capturing a point 12 for listening post 18 for upgraded listening post but 27 for a second upgrade so they get a little more requisition from their LP3 um, In general their upgrades for the listing post is really expensive a listing post standard costs 100 requisition which is kind of standard But the first upgrade costs you give me a second 155 requisition which is a lot normal uh, upgrades are like 100 and between 100 requisition and in between uh, 60 to 75 power so this is a very high um, cost for an upgraded listing post and upgrading it even more is also ex more expensive than standard I would say the, the second upgrade costs 300 requisition and 160 power where standard ish is about 250 a little more requisition and 150 uh, power in that region you get a little more from your second upgrade listening post so I kind of dig that change but uh, the, the, the first upgrade is so expensive another difference for resource wise is in the power your thermal plasma generator gives you the standard 40 power which for every faction is true but your your standard rune thread construct which is your standard uh, generator gives you with if it's not decayed 12 at the start instead of 10 and the costs are really low in the beginning and uh, increase by 10 you start off with 120 130 so really cheap generators in the beginning for a lot of power income so you can start off with one or two uh, generators with relatively low cost and get a lot of out of them so you won't need as much generators uh, at all but there is another difference so you can play a lot um, very how could, should I say a lot um, power heavy is that you can have per HQ not six but nine generators for you will need to build a new um, a new HQ for additional um, generator cap you could say in standard games 
you won't need that because um, you also need some requisition and if you build all these um, you lose a lot of requisition because they, the cost increases um, it goes over, over 200 and whatnot for a generator in the late game so yeah they have really strong beginning power income and then in the later stages you yeah pay a lot of for it okay that's for the requisition and power the unit caps are your standard 2020 you start off with uh, let me see 10 0 which is also pretty standard you increase your your um, caps by researches there are two researches for uh, infantry and four researches for vehicle which is also standard you also get plus um, two if you build your occult forge which is your machine pit you could say um, what what is also interesting is that some sergeants which are all sorcerers here uh, increase the powers. support or the squad cap by one this is true for your standard rubric marines which are your standard marines this is true for uh, your terminators and give me a second there you have also a mutated um, leader which increases the squad cap by one this can be very helpful in the beginning if you for example want to spam marines um, you don't need to research uh, all the squad caps so quickly if you have the sergeants aka sorcerers out okay that's it for the let's say standard the beginning stuff let's jump into the buildings i talked already about the generators and i want to talk just a little more about the listening post the silver spires if you have upgraded the Silver Spire once and are in tier 3, you have this ability, Warp Detonation. Now I don't have one in the vicinity where I don't want to destroy one. Um, I will show later, probably by this one, what it does. It does like a big detonation, but um, also drains a lot of power, uh, power energy, um, life, you could say, hit points. Yeah, it is the word. Hit points um, of the Silver Spire. So, it's uh, you could say last resort but you also need to have quite a lot of HP on this uh, Silver Spire to use this ability so it's kind of counterintuitive you want to use it at the last resort but the last resort you normally only use when you are um, thinking you can't defend this anymore and this is normally when you have low HP so I think this ability um, I would never use it to be honest Maybe I understand it wrong, but as I understand it, I would never use it. Um, we will uh, detonate this silver spire when I'm gone through the buildings. Yeah, there is your HQ, which is a pretty standard HQ. You get add-ons to tech up. You get your builder units, your first capping units, and uh, your hero unit. And tier two, you get a, um, as yeah, you could say, honor guard unit. And in tier four, you have Ariman the Exile, which is. Uh, late game hero sorcerer unit. In tier 1 you have the option to either go for a warp gate or a demon gate. In the warp gate you get um, access to your marines and yeah pretty much all your marine stuff and in the demon gate you get demons. In tier 1 you get either the screamers as demons or the rubric marines as marines and as you tech up you get more options. In tier 2 you can build your occult forge which gives you access to a multitude of vehicles also a hero vehicle which we'll cover later and in if you tier 3 you can build the altar of siege which gives you access to um, the tier 4 research a demon prince and which i haven't shown here uh, a research which allow you to uh, call down the what is it called avatar of change we will see how it's called, like the, the big uh, chicken. Your research building is a dark library which has a lot of researches. I have done most of them for this uh, safe game. Um, it's basically your tier 1.5. You also needed to get it from tier 2 to tier 3 in addition to the Gold Forge. And which is interesting, I will, uh, most, uh, most some buildings have auras. Um, the warp gate makes the Rupert Marines run around faster than warp gate. The demon gate gives you uh, your demons which have instability, um, some morale regen and stuff, uh, maybe even health regen, but yeah, it's basically to turn off their instability effects and then you can deep strike them. Um, you can deep strike here. Um, 
And the dark library has an aura which makes your abilities recharge faster around it, which is really handy. And where's my builder? The dark library is really cheap, like only 100 uh, power uh, requisition, 75 power, and you get uh, some of the resources back once you build it, similar to a listening post or a um, power generator. As your tier 1 research is limited to one research, I recommend to build it uh, once you clicked the tier 2 research, on the way to tier 2 you could say, and then just build it, because it's so cheap, uh, just build it, you get the resources back anyway, so really interesting implementation, pretty much once what's the thinking behind this probably that you uh, really need your dark library as a source raw kind of faction, so make it cheap, make it uh, useful. Okay, uh, is it about the buildings, I think? Yeah, now let's detonate this uh, thing here. We'll see it does a big boom. And basically it just kills it. You see, it makes a big boom, probably deals a lot of damage to units, but you lose your <laughs> listening post. And as I told you before, the listening posts aren't cheap, so you want to hang on to them as much as you can, so never ever use this ability um, you will, I don't okay I don't take it back if you don't need as much resource as the description states here note warp detonation requires a sizable fraction of civil spires health in order to be invoked so if they have less HP you can't use it is my reading of this okay but that's pretty much for the buildings let's jump into the units and the units are all very special. We will start with the builder unit. The builder unit itself is really special. Um, I should also note while I'm here, they have a special UI actually built for them. I toggled it off. There's an option which uh, can toggle it off because I'm so so used to this uh, UI and the other UI has some issues in the, in the usability. So if you are confused when you first start the Thousand Suns, quit the game look in the options, tick that one that you uh, use the old UI if you want to. Okay, now back to the units. Here are the Thrall Wizards. This is a... yeah, looks like cultists, but aren't. These are little uh, wizardy people. Um, start with two is your builder unit. Building uh, works that you... it's materializing themselves. It just needs to a little tip like um, the Dark Elder do. They have access to uh, some spells. The first two spells you have in the beginning, I think. The Bolt of Change is a little bolt which is best used against vehicles. Does not uh, much uh, damage against infantry. And then you have the Breath of Unlife. The Breath of Unlife gives you the ability to uh, drain life from one of these models to the two Sorcerer Lords. We will cover later your Sorcerer Lord and Ahriman. Um, and the last one is really interesting. It's a big warp storm they can control once they have a full squad and the research done and also their Thrall Wizard Leader. The warp storm basically does a big storm around them and also kills them. <laughs> the warp storm also does friendly fire so it's basically like a, a Leroy Jenkins move where you move with your Thrall Wizards and then detonate them. Uh, in PvP I find it doesn't find it very useful to be honest. But that's the builder. Let's jump over to the Lords. The first commander you have access to and should always build is the Sorcerer Lord. Why is that? Not only does he look awesome, he is your bread and butter in tier 1. Um, he has always the ability to use Doom Bolts, but he can also choose one of three um, specializations. Illusionist, Summoner and Warlock. Um, these give you access to uh, different spells which you can upgrade in the different tiers. We will just click the first one just for the um, showing. You can upgrade your Doom Bolt. Um, these are basically your tier 1 you can choose, your tier 3, tier 4, uh, tier, tier 2, tier 3. But you can um, only get a maximum of 6 spells. So you start with 1, so you can f choose 5 additional. It, these also costs costs your resources and need time to build so you need to pro, um, use them uh, make use of them in advance or think of what you would need in advance their uh, prices doesn't increase much but uh, yeah they aren't for free and they are permanent when your 
It's also a lot of dice. These are still there, which is good because you have um, used resources on it and can be bad if you have chosen the wrong specialization. In general, I recommend not using the specialization I have, the Illusionist. We will um, talk about the spells in a second. Um, and then you have Ariman in tier 4. I just cover him now because I want to send him away. Um, he has also a spell book and he has a lot of different spells. <laughs> and these spells you can uh, tick three of them. You have three global spells, you have two um, epic spells where you can only choose one of them. Um, we will go over the spells in a second. Uh, he can teleport and if upgraded he has uh, access to the Taliban of Silence which is a tier 4 research which you have to do all uh, three separate researches before. Gives him this uh, fancy stuff which can silence enemy uh, leaders. Um, these guys have a little meeting here in the middle with some other um, sources so I will send them over there and we'll talk about them a little in the future. There's the Icon Barrow Commander as well, which is a tier 2 um, commander. Basically you can build from your warp gate, gives you a health regeneration if attached to a squad. Has also access to the Bolt of Change, similar to the Thrall Wizards, but also the Blasted Standard of Renewal, um, which has a multitude of um, benefits. It um, makes the uh, spells abilities recharge of the attached squad instantly and globally accelerates reinforcement which is really interesting um, halving the time needed to requisition all the troops that is really fast um, but it drains his life a random amount if he dies by doing this the, the thing doesn't work right the Eichenberg cannot die from invoking this ability, but he must be, it could help to use it, similar to the, to, to uh, exploding your listening post. Um, he has also another passive, which um, decreases the cost of any demons you have, you, you build. So if you make a, how should I say, a hybrid build with um, marines and demons, consider building icon barrows. You can have up to two of them and both um, successfully decrease the cost of demons you build. So really nice to have on the field for multitude of reasons. And the last sorcerer commander thing you have access to is the mutated sorcerers. You can have up to two of these guys. They are melee only as you can see. They all have this stuff and this little tentacle here. Um, they have the ability a psychic lance which is basically a grenade you could say. They can teleport over short distances and have the gas gasps of chaos. Um, which, um, how should I say, is a levitate ability. Levitates an enemy uh, above ground so they can't move and can't use abilities, damages um, and the damage they take um, will heal the, the sorcerer. Really, really strong ability, needs to be um, researched though. And then you have also the weaker mortis. Uh, give me a second increases ranged and melee fighting capabilities and the squad pays a terrible price and loses health okay standard okay if the squ uh, squad dies uh, under this effect um, the health loss will be transferred to the mutated sorcerer so that you always need to have a lot of health on your unit to use these abilities so uh, you see a common theme here powerful abilities that cost health in return and then he is one of the ones that can be uh, called, um, used to call down uh, the Lord of Change, which is your tier 4 demon unit. Okay, these are your commander type units. We have, as I said, the little uh, meeting of sorcerers in the, in the middle. So we can talk first about the sorcerer lord's abilities. We have here the illusionist specialization, doom bolts you always have. Then you have the invisibility, which makes him invisible. You have the clone ability, which creates a clone, a decoy basically to train some fire, can be useful. And then you have the strongest of them, the confusion, which creates an area where units get confused and attack each other, which is really nice. Also has a small chance to reduce their firepower and defensive capabilities, which is also interesting. So this can be used in, let's say, choke points where the enemy wants to attack, you just put it on the ground for a horde of orcs probably or 
I've seen him used against Imperial Guard as well, where they just fight each other. Really, really For strong Karina, ability. The strongest ability in the Illusionist past, if you ask me. Um, for Ariman, we will look into the spells in a second. Now we switch over to another uh, Sorcerer Lord. This time the Sorcerer Lord did choose the Warlock specialization, which specializes in damaging spells or buff and debuff spells. Doom Bolt, of course, then you have the Tainting Bolt, which is a damage um, meant for use against commanders, which is like a snapshot, you could say, dealing a lot of damage against commanders only works against commanders. Then you have the Malficio Pavoni. Sounds like a Italian dish if you ask me. But this is basically a damaging spell and also root spell against a enemy squad. Basically like your shackle ability from your chaos uh, sorcerer plus damage on them. And then you have the force armor which uh, increases the armor basically of a squad. Give me when active the source or Lord's armor where it became temporarily increased. Offer better protection. Unfortunately, this effect also renders him more rigid and bulky, hindering his movement. Okay. Okay. So this, the strongest ability here is the Malficio Pavoni. Um, root ability which does damage is really handy. And if you have um, squ um, enemies that rely on command units like, let's say, Necrons or Eldar with uh, Farseer build or basically any space marine that has a uh, force command on the field this um, path can be really really good especially against necrons if you ask me because you can tie down the necron warriors and shoot f at them out of their firing range and you can use the tending bolt to uh, severely injure the necron lord and the necrons really rely on their necron lord um, now let's jump over to the last um, source a lot here which goes for the summoner specialization which is the most how should I say the fan favorite specialization because you can summon demons on the field which is handy in a multitude of ways the first one is a seeking skull which is not that much used it um, brings in a demonic entity which will see infiltrating enemies units around basically a true sight skull um, da -da -da -da, being being unharmed, it's completely defenseless once spotted, it needs protection to remain in place. Okay, so let's click it here. It's a similar to the Chaos Lord's um, icon. I see you. It slowly loses health and can be spotted and killed. Uh, basically a spotter where you can, you can put down and then have a wish in there. Not co as commonly used, but can be really handy, I suppose. And then we have the two um, fan favorite. You have the spiteful toot Larry, which is a demon skull which comes out of the ground. There he is, and he will shoot um, stuff at the enemy. Um, he isn't very tanky. I think he can be tied down. Da -da -da -da. Brought from the life tunnels, Antini has limited weapons to defend itself, but it can hurl an enemy because the money against ability then yes of course sure. Um I'm not sure but I think you can target it down and kill it, which is the downside of this. It does not have a lot of health. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it has um a quite a big um uh, attacking area and yeah it attacks anything in this area um, really nice if you are like in the sieging um, space and want to siege or even in a defensive um, position so you have a turret you can uh, place on the ground when you just click it the last one is the demon summoning which is pretty much what it states what it, it does what it states it summons the demon uh, which has a lot of health gets more health if you upgrade a spell a lot of damage and what it has is a really really big knockback strength on his melee attacks if you send it into like an orc or a even like uh, you see the most effects of course against guardsmen they ch literally they jump from here to here if they uh, get attacked so it's very good at uh, disrupting enemy squads as for all uh, abilities you need to have the additional layers you could say the additional levels to make them more 
devastating. And yeah, of course, the Doom Bolts is your Doom Bolt ability. I haven't showed it, but uh, I thought this is clear. Let's talk about Ahriman. Ahriman the Exile has access to a multitude of spells. Um, it can summon uh, invisible and unkillable marines for a short amount of time. Winds of Chaos is a spell that grants unleashing corrupting winds upon an enemy squad, causing damage and all in their path. Then you have the Discs of Siege. Um, Disc of pure magic force, assault the enemy, causing disorientation, chaos. These are all very cryptic. So basically a grenade-like spell. Then you have Scene Spoon, um, which, uh, where do we have it? Gives a random boon to an enemy, to a practitioner, uh, to a friendly squad. He did now get more health, for example. Um, then you have this uh, tentacle uh, thingy, which we will use in another one, which gives like tentacles underground and whatnot. Phantasmic Killer controls a malevolent entity that haunts an enemy squad. We will use that in a second as well, if possible. Change Curse is a curse that does multiple maladies, doesn't state what it really does. Then we have the Meteor Shower, which is a Meteor Shower, we will use it in a second. And then you have these three global abilities. You have Blur Reality, Illusion in Blues, Reality Safe, hindering the sight range of all amenity. That's really cool, a global um, blind. Then you have the Mass Slow, which is also really nice. Um, performing with the, the movement of enemies was a slight decrease globally. Really nice. Additionally, the concentration requires to render him vulnerable to attack. So this is a channeling ability, like this ritual are probably channeling. And then you have the time dilation. Um, increases ability recharge for all Increases the ability recharge time for all enemies, so they can't use as much abilities. So, mass slow, you. This is. Yeah, it's channeling. You have to uh, click it. Okay, I learned that now. We'll use the meteor shower. Why not? Just use it. Big castle range, you can see. And. There's a few meteor showers of random positions, so. Basically like orbital bombardment, but with meteors. How much? I counted like eight now. Eight meteors. Okay, so eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it has quite a lot of time. It, it's basically a uh, orbital bombardment, but uh, with meteors. Okay, fine. Oh, really long mission. The area was here, and it shoots over here. And what did I hit? Scene Spoon I already used. Let's jump over to the another Ahriman, where we have these tentacles. We will move a little out of place here before we use them. And we have the Pluriality, which is also a, um, how should I say, channeling ability. And we have this Summon, which I find really useful to have more um, demons on the field. These are invisible and unkillable, but will yeah, just be uh, um, forced back to the warp in a few moments. And then we have this tentacle ability, I think it's around him, yeah, you click it and then you have this, can't use him and have this little field around him. Enemies entering this area are affected by mild fear effect, while all his abilities are inspiring, inspired and rendered fearless. Physical realm that form the back tentacles and enemies. Iron Man cannot exit. Okay, basically a big fear ability and fear, uh, basically fear to the enemies and fearless, like uh, unbreakable for your own. Mm -hmm. Not not the greatest, if you ask me. And then we jump again to the last Ariman, where we will use the. <sighs> Did we use time dilation? No, time dilation. Um, this one, this one, let's see if we can use this. So we have to target the spell for the Psymassive Killer. We have the Winds of Chaos, which we also have to choose an enemy squad. So we can't choose here. Just showing the last um, global ability here. So he can be used to just stand back and use one of his channeling abilities to increase the uh, effectiveness of your army while also summoning a squad in the meantime, for example. 
and then having the meteor shower every now and then that uh, sounds like a really good idea if you ask me okay these are your commander units a lot of time spent of them because they are really important with all the abilities you need to think in advance if you're fighting orcs or whatnot what abilities you want to have on the field okay and i split it here uh, between demons infantry and vehicles we start off with your infantry first infantry squad you have is your cultists they start uninfiltrated but if you get their cultist leader they get infiltrated and which is a big seller if you attach a sorcerer lord they, uh, the sorcerer lord also becomes uh, invisible can you also attach a mutated sorcerer yes so any sorcerer attached will also get invisible which is really nice in the early game um, if your lord is weakened you can um, yeah I attach him so he is um, invisible they get access to flamers and great launchers in tier 2 um, standard stand is melee but I would use them in range um, not because the range damage isn't that high but <laughs> the sound of the range weapon is really nice no really um, use them in range um, then the backbone of your infantry are, um, is your Rubik Marines. Rubik Marines have are unbreakable, which sounds incredible on paper, but move really, really slow. They get a little speed boost when they have this inspiring source, but you can still see uh, what's the problem with them. The damage is really good at them and they fight until they die, so they have no morale. Um, they can get an inspiring sorcerer in tier 1, even in tier 1.5, which brings them a Doombolt ability. They can get uh, Warp Bolt ammunition or Inferno Bolt ammunition. The first one is good against vehicles and the second one is good against infantry. So uh, versatile in that way. And they get the Warp Space ability with their leader once it's researched. The Warp Space ability uh, counters a bit their slow movement. If you use them, they can move really fast. And on the second, they have, after this, increased maximum uh, health for a short amount of time so really nice if you want to outflank your opponent basically to enter or leave battle um, basically if you enter battle you also have a little more tankiness to them so really nice for engaging and this uh, aspiring sorcerer is also one entity that can be used to summon the great demon lord of change in tier 2 you can build the chosen squad from your HQ. The chosen squad is a melee focus um, squad uh, which has one problem I heard that they, they have a lot of morale but their morale armor is really low so they tend to break a lot. Are melee focused and have a lot of abilities. These uh, last abilities need to be researched I think in tier 3. But they start with Warp Lightning, which is basically a AoE um, Lightning. Um, cause the enemy to greedily slow down and take damage. Yeah, it's like a Chain Lightning ability. Twisting Path. Um, targets Mind Horrifying Visions in the state target. Temporarily immobilized. And, which is funny, <laughs> which is a uh, scene sway. In addition, this spell may be may permanently increase or decrease the stats of the target uh, unit. So it can be a boon for the enemy as well. Uh, similar to how the scene bolt for the Chaos Demons does random damage and whatnot. So interesting. And then you have these two uh, abilities, the Warding Raptora. Um, lays down a small icon who gives protection against range attacks within its radius. Invulnerable but will deteriorate, so basically a little icon here, which does a little um, uh, orb here, and uh, in the orb you take less range damage. And telekinesis, which is similar to how, um, who was it? Like the, give me a second, the muted it's also has this um, grasp of chaos. Um, these have a slightly Less powerful version, um, which is basically um, does only a little damage, but um, lifts down the squad and throws them around, which is really good for disruption. In tier two, you get also access to the Practicus Coven. These are considered vehicles. These are your little disc um, jockeys here. On these little discs, aren't as fast as they look. Faster than the Rubik Marines, but still not the fastest. I think. 
Uh, this one increases their speed, not sure. Has have a leader. Um, the leader can also be used to uh, summon the Lord of Change. They have a Doom Bolt on their leader, have the warp time, which is uh, the same research as the warp space. Warp time increases the damage dealt um, by the text of it in slot and also provides protection. They are made sorry are melee focused so really good to have this ability and then you have to be foul um, which is basically a stun for enemy building this spell targets an enemy building causing it to shut down resource production and its ability to fight back basically this is a listening point shutdown a listening post shutdown ability they can also jump Look really awesome when you jump. <laughs> In tier 3, I think you have access to the Occult Scarab Terminators, which is not only Terminator variant, which is a uh, hybrid of melee and range. Have slow movement as for all Terminators, and more so because they are um, basically Rubik Marine Terminators. Um, they also have access to Warp and Inferno uh, Bolt ammunition in their Storm Boulders making them good against infantry or vehicles. They have a aspiring sorcerer which um, gives them the Doom Bolt ability and also this warp space ability which is like the fast movement and increased uh, um, hit points. They can also ha teleport uh, if used uh, if a research is done for that and yeah that's pretty much it. They have little hammers. One thing I forgot to note, which is true for Rubik Marines and Terminators, we can read it through so you can see it yourself. Um, in the midst of combat, memories of their former living self sometimes emerge, filling them with battle hunger. This basically means that some random time in battle, when fighting, they get damage buffs. Just random. So they can randomly be more effective. Or not. So, <laughs> these memory uh, um, passive is also true for the Terminators. Okay, that's for infantry. Let's jump over to the demon. The demons uh, start off with the Screamer of, uh, Screamers of Siege, which we uh, kind of know um, from the Chaos Demons. These are fast moving, uh, can jump, melee only. Um, they start off with a little less uh, squad size, get um, researches for them to make them tougher and more stable. They have all demons apart from the mutated squad have this instability effect which um, once their morale is broken will render them unable to uh, reinforce. I'm not sure if they really take damage as the chaos demons but they are really hindered when they don't have morale. And in tier 2 you can um, Research an ability Demonic Swoop, which basically um, makes them fight harder. They, they move faster and deal more damage, right? Then we're increasing the speed and damage of the Screamers. Yeah, really, really good. Um, yeah, these are really good in engaging uh, enemy range squads. Really good use against Tau, for example. In tier 2, you get access to the Horrors of Siege, which is your basically horror squad you know from your Chaos um, with the damage spread. Um, they can have more on the squad, as you can see. And if they can kill it, they sometimes spawn blue horrors. And these guys are mainly focused and just damage sponges, you could say. So it's interesting, uh, fin I find it cool that if you use horrors, you can uh, get some uh, back for a short amount of time. Can be really useful. In tier three, you get these Flamers of Siege, also known from the Chaos Demons. These are, yeah, you could say heavy flamer demons, have a medium attacking range, but in a cone and deal massive, massive, massive damage against infantry. Not sure about heavy infantry as it states here, but I assure you, if you fight against Imperial Guard, for example, and you use them, they will just melt down any infantry the enemy will throw at you. And the last squad you have here is a mutated squad. They are more like heavy infantry, similar to the possessed squad, you could say, of uh, Chaos Marines. They have the Terror of Siege ability, which um, slows down enemies. Um, yeah, so they can um, hunt it down and kill it. And the Intimidate is, I think, for if you have your deformed leader, um, 
He was called maybe distracted uh, by the insults that slowing their pace. Oh, this is the slow. The closer man is out, the better they also fool the insults. This is the slow, and this is. Comes infiltrated. Ah, you have a little infiltrate ability, which is really nice. And while you're infiltrated, you can't use the intimidate, of course. Um, and what is it called? Can also perform critical hits, so they uh, deal more damage, I suppose. Uh, randomly, so really nice to um, engage if you use that. Okay, and now lastly, let's cover the vehicles. They can be built in tier 2, starting off with a Rhino, which is basically a Rhino. Has the smoke launcher ability if you research it. And you have the Rubik Dreadnought, which is your Hellfire Dreadnought with um, storm boulders or heavy boulders on the side, and rocket launchers can get access to um, auto cannons and less cannons in tier 3. Um, has an ability once research grows, hitting warp flames, which cover him in flames, dealing damage to. Uh, enemies and yes enemy and friends while he uses it he also loses hp so it's a toggle ability similar ability is also true for the feral from inferno furnace dreadnought which is your hero dreadnought you can only have one of them has also this warp uh, corrosating flame abilities once research can have a multi melter is otherwise needed or mostly used in melee has some nice Abilities. He has an aura which you can see here, which, um, give me a second, there's a command aura that increases nearby vehicles' weapon accuracy, so increasing the damage of vehicles around it. has an entry bolt, which is a, uh, how should I say, EMP basically, um, may lose a steering control weapon system and whatnot, um, or be slowed, so a random ability, a random debuff you could say for a vehicle. He has Rectify, which is um, targets and vehicle and restores some of the damage sustained, so it's an heal ability. And he has a total self restore, which is basically what it states. It's a total self restore. During his spells, um, incarnation unit will be rendered immobile and totally unable to attack. So you used it to get him back, but he can't attack in this. Um, temporary ability loss hindered movement and severe exposure to enemy damage so use it with care if you use it in the midst of a battle um, this will be a sitting duck for quite a while can be used outside of battle um, once you have finished the battle and he is low on health use that so you get all your abilities back and whatnot before the next battle in tier 3 you get also access to your chaos sun's predator which is a standard predator which can uh, twin and glass cannons on the top will always keep his um, what I called heavy boulders on the side and in tier 3.5 not in tier 4 you get your thousand suns whirlwind which is uh, awesome this guy is awesome um, has these big chaos balls with yeah it just looks awesome is awesome limited to one I recommend building him as soon as you can um, you may have noticed that all your vehicles have this muted hulls um, which is a research they can get, so they get increased health. And yeah, additional 1000 risk may gain slightly better durability against weapons that penetrate armor. So, armor upgrade. So, for all the vehicles. Okay, and now I jump on to the demonic um, units. You have your Scene Demon Prince in tier 4. The Scene Demon Prince is a melee only version. Your, your Standard Demon Prince for Chaos Demons are also melee only. He can jump, which a normal Demon Prince can't. He has the Breath of Change, does a lot of damage in the cone area in front of him. Has Drain Life, which is what it states what it does. It does um, target an enemy squad and drains it life. And he has the Demon Sacrifice. Um, with his own maximum health, select a lesser demon from its squad to be sacrificed. The squad is destroyed and life form is consumed by the caster, thus increasing its maximum health. Um, yeah, if you have low uh, health enemy squads, this is, isn't really useful. And then we have the big boy here. Oh, Just click it, so summon scene great demon Lord of Change. Smash. There is the chicken. The chicken isn't a great fighter, it has only has 10,000 HP, which isn't a lot for a greater demon. 
so very fragile but it is kind of mobile it can jump and has a multitude of abilities it has the rain of tears dark in an area of rain corrosive glowing psychic raindrops um the enemy within after health slowly zapped away so it's an aoe damage spell but does affect vehicles and buildings and does not affect vehicles and buildings so it's an anti infantry spell then you have the soul quake a uh, raw power scene will erupt from the right beneath their foundations um target enemy building damage them above so it's a damaging against buildings does less damage to all other units in the vicinity of the quake but hinders their movement so it's a slow it also it can also target open areas but the damage is caused upon victims is minor best targeted directly on enemy structure okay it's basically an earthquake can target the ground but uh, as stated it's more best used against enemy a building here we have the rain looks really fancy doesn't do a lot of damage if i remember correctly then i have the greater wind of change um, is an ability around him uh, controls great wave chaotic energy body destroying all in his past it's a nomad transfigures damage to the unfortunate victims caught in their wind chaotic wind does not discern friend from foe another of these uh, area of effect abilities which does also damage to uh, friends but only minor damage damage isn't the greatest in general this guy the chicken isn't really worth going for because as you saw the abilities are nice but abilities don't feel as impactful as they should be if you ask me so um i mean you you teched up to tier 4 you got this research done you get this big big chicken on the field and then you want to use its ability and does only like 250 damage around himself not sure about the uh, soul quake i haven't used it yet but uh could be useful to destroy buildings but okay and the rain of tears i know for sure doesn't do a lot of damage as well so dear developers if you see that please buff these abilities this is a tier 4 demon and his abilities should have more of an impact if you ask me one thing i forgot to talk about the buildings i will cover now are your defensive buildings other than your silver spire which shoots like little bolts of energy you have access to a heavy bolter pillar which is a stone pillar that if in range will go up and uh, reveal a bolter inside and shoot really expensive 150 requisition and 75 power can be upgraded with uh, inferno bolts so dealing more damage and can be upgraded either with this uh, infiltration ability and then of course you have mines and the uh, damage increase cost 50 requisition the invisibility resort cost 50 power okay did i cover everything uh yes i think i covered everything i wanted to cover so we can now jump into the tech tree i have prepared so see you there and here we are in the tech tree uh, what I primarily want to talk about here in the tech tree is a the tech requirements The tech requirements to get it here too is to have a demon gate a demon gate or a warp gate so either or and From getting to tier 2 to tier 3 you need uh, the same plus the dark library plus the cold forge to get to tier 4 you need to build a altar of Siege, and then you have immediately access to the research. The research is rather cheap, it only costs 225 requisition and power, so really cheap tier 4. But uh, as stated, as stated uh, before, the uh, stuff you get in tier 4 isn't uh, as great as for other factions. Another thing I want to talk about is the upgrades. Um, you get access to upgrades um, from your buildings, which have like basic upgrades for the units they have in, like the warp gate has upgrades for your Rubik Marines, Terminators, and Icon Bearers. These upgrades are first uh, unlocked in tier uh, 1.5. Uh, the first one increases the health, the second one increases the damage, and the third one increases the melee damage, I think, and also gives them a little um, 
chance to dodge enemy attacks if uh, I read that correctly. Similar, this is true for your demon gate where you get these uh, demonology upgrades with increases the fighting capabilities of your demons and uh, making them uh, more stable so the instability effects aren't as severe. Um, for your vehicles you don't have uh, tiered upgrades, you have in tier 3 this uh, mutated hulls um, upgrade which gives them more damage re uh, resistance and health for all the vehicles. To research in the dark library you will start off with this um, one here which gives uh, boons to all your leaders, um, leader units like your sergeants aka sorcerers has three tiers which gives them health, damage, uh, ability, cooldown and whatnot, um, damage resistance later on and then this finishes in this uh, stuff for Ahriman which can silence enemy foes. In tier 2 you have access to these uh, two spells. This is your warp space and warp time abilities. This is... Uh, what was this again? Twisting path for, for your chosen. And then another two abilities for your chosen. You have also this uh, two researches here which is especially targeted to your source a lot, increasing its uh, health damage and most importantly the um, spell recharge time. Then you have this uh, ability uh, research here which increases the number of thralls you can have to a, a number of five and gives them access to the uh, warp storm ability. And this one, uh, sorry I forgot but I think this generally increases the damage of all your infantry um, giving them a better ammunition. Okay, that's about the resources I wanted to talk about. Let's jump over to the units. Um, there is the most important thing, a little convoluted, but here it shows what um, the sorcerer has access to, depending on what book he chooses. So don't read into it too much. It's uh, if you see it in game, you finally you you understand it uh, clearly. Um, your detection is. Divided as such that your source lord has detection, um, your bigger sorcerers also have detection later on, that um, your sorcerer sergeants all have detection, and your higher demons have detection, and also your summoned uh, eye, if you go for the summoning uh, specialization, has detection. Your um, Hero Dreadnought also has detection and this one should also have detection but it doesn't state I think. Okay, lastly we talk can talk about what is your bonus units if you play survival. Um, your bonus units are Screamers, Rubik Marines, a Dreadnought, a Predator and then another Chicken, the Lord of Change. Yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about the tech trees. In general, I can uh, again tell you what I think about the th strength in different tiers. I think uh, Thousand Suns have a good tier 1. They can harass a bit and stuff in tier 1, depending if they go Rubik Marines or Screamers, or even avoid both and only get Cultists. Um, you will always, always want to have your Sorcerer Lord and choose one of the specialization to help you survive tier 1 and even um, harass the enemy. And once you hit tier 2, you become quite powerful because you have these unbreakable marines with two upgrades, uh, Icon Barrel, um, the Cold Forge gives you access to a Jumping Squad and Dreadnought, so really strong tier 2. Uh, tier 3 is also pretty good because you have access to more um, demons and also another sorcerer uh, entity, predators and a whirlwind in tier 3.5 which is really nice. Uh, tier 4 as stated before isn't the strongest. Yes you have this cool sorcerer Ariman, but this guy takes forever to get built so it costs a lot and he takes forever to get on the field um, but has a lot of utility um, as I stated with his abilities. So that's what I think about uh, strengths in different tiers. As the usual, I have prepared some build orders, which we will jump into right now. And here we are in the build order document. I have prepared 
four build orders for you. The first is one I find most intriguing um, and Gap PR, one of the strongest players uh, playing unification right now, um, tends to use this as uh, I have saw, seen in a few uh, replays of him. It is a cultist opener. Basically, it, it does what it states. Um, it only gives one generator, one additional builder, and then three cultists, and then, of course, your sorcerer lord. You would then later, of course, have to build a warp gate or demon gate. I recommend building a dark library, but you also can postpone it and build a lab dark library once you would click the tier 2 button. The dark library gives you access to this occultist leader, which in turn can infiltrate your sorcerer as well. So then you have infiltrated um, cultists running around the map, which is really nice. As always, I recommend either go to Warlock or Summoner Specialization. As your uh, generators produce a lot of energy, um, you can get away with only building two generators. If you want to upgrade all your silver spires, which is really expensive, you would probably need a third generator on the way. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. It's a, let's say, light tier one. You want to get to tier two in good time and then start to build your tier two stuff. Most Mostly uh, your... Rubik Marines with upgrades, or if you want to uh, push the enemy base some horrors. Or even get an Occult Forge, which is always needed. Then you have the Rubric Opener, which is basically a Marine Opener, um, which is... I didn't go too much on the Rubik Marines in T1. You get two Thrall Wizards because they can cap. Did I tell you that they can cap? They can cap, so you don't need uh, another capping uh, unit. So you can get away with the three builder units. They can run around and cap. Um, interesting uh, with them is that they also, um, if they build stuff, only need to tip it. So they can cap, click to build the um, listing post, and then run and cap another point. So really useful here. As usual, you also want to get your sorcerer lord. You build a demon gate, of course, and a gen, and get two Rubik maroons out. Later, I recommend getting the... Uh, the uh, Occult Fort, Occult Fort, um, the Dark Library as the usual uh, generator and tier 2. The Dark Library gives you access to your Sorcerer Sergeants and uh, the upgrade in has an upgrade for the Warp Gate here, which is needed. The upgrade in the Warp Gate requires the Dark Library, I wanted to say, which increases the health of your Rubik Marines. I recommend that you don't get too much Rubik Marines in tier 1, as they are really slow and... Um, get access to, in tier 2 to their um, heavy weapons, so ammunition. So Rubik Marines are strongest in tier 2 when you have the ammunition upgrade and the second upgrade for them here. As well as the warp time, warp space ability from their sorcerer, which is also in tier 2 research. So this basically helps you to survive to tier 2 and then get maybe a third Rubik Marine squad or uh, practicus coven and whatnot to support them um yeah the third opener is a screamer opener basically a demon opener um similar that you get your two thralls and then your sorcerer lord um but you get build a demon gate of course get uh, two screamers um a singular gen and as the usual i recommend building the dark library and a gen then tick click tier two you can also uh, skip the Dark Library and build it after you click Tier 2. The Dark Library in turn gives you up, uh, a bit the ability to upgrade your demons and from the Demon Gate once. The Screamers um, are kind of fragile because of their instability. So these are best used against uh, ranged focused factions like Tau, maybe Elder, um, Imperial Guard also really uh, prone to attacks from the Screamers. Mm, as usual with uh, melee harassing squads, this is uh, from the builds I've shown you the most micro-intensive build. In general, the are the Thousand Suns really micro-intensive because of all the abilities they have access to. And the last one is a tier 2 rush. Um, you can rush a little faster if you don't build your Sorcerer Lord, but you want to have your Sorcerer Lord. If you don't have any units out, um, you're dead. Basically, in a standard PvP game, when the enemy notices you don't have stuff on the field, you're dead. So at least get your sorcerer out to 
maybe summon a demon or something to uh, to um, help you defend. Um, so you can hit tier two in a uh, very fast time, get an occult forge out and rush some dreadnoughts, for example, is what you can do with a tier two rush. Okay, that's the, the build orders. As the usual, you can find all these documents in my Google Drive. And we will finish this guide off with a replay. The replay is GPR playing, playing Thousand Suns against Refiler playing Dark Angels on Bloody Hell, I think is the map called. Um, the game I already have casted on my channel, but uh, as the usual, I will this time focus on GPR. KPR's side of things uh, w when he plays Thousand Suns. So, see you in the replay. And here we are in the replay. KPR playing Thousand Suns versus Defiler playing Dark Angels, one of his signature factions. So, the opening for KPR is interesting. He chooses to do the given gate and two constructs, two um, generators getting two thralls out and the sorcerer lord. In my book this uh, looks like a tier 2 rush, but we will see how he plays it. Gets the points with his thralls after starting his um, starting his buildings, which is also a big upside for um, Thousand Suns that he can immediately start capping. You don't need to get a uh, dedicated cap agent. And here he gets a one cultist squad. I, I should note that this uh, replay is, uh, which is a little old by now. So I think he uh, can. He probably has improved his playstyle by now, but still, um, getting all his points now and pushes a bit with his cultists now. Probably uh, defending his uh, thrall wizards, capping this relic, getting some. Uh, squad reinforcements and his sorcerer is out 50%. He doesn't build anything from the demon gate, probably just build it for tagging reasons. But um, if you want to tag later, anyways, I would recommend skipping any of these because um, you can then build it later on and have more units on the field early. Here, yeah, a little misclick because what I'd say that they are in melee stance originally. So if you click on an enemy, um, they will walk into melee, so you really need to be careful with that. Um, because this uh, um, cult is a lot of uh, damage they take here, and probably the squad will be uh, killed here. Then we have the Sorcerer Lord, is also close for a Warlock specialization, getting the stun ability. Does he finish capping here? Missing the Doom Balls. I always want to click on a squad, not on the ground. Ah, he forces melee combat with the Thralls, which is really nice. They have this AoE knockback um, ability that the Psycho has. As a company master, company master should win in one on one with the Source Lord. The Source Lord isn't the greatest in fighting, as you would imagine. You have the Kuldus uh, forcing melee combat against the scouts, which is what they should do. The scouts do tremendous damage in range. More Kuldus, so he goes into a Kuldus game here. Whilst <laughs> normally started as a um, tier 2 rush build, kind of. So he, you see he floats a lot of uh, power because he built two generators where he clearly only needed one. Killing these uh, scouts, which is most important because the scouts deal a lot of damage. Um, would need to stick one squad here to help his um, social lord out, which takes a lot, a lot of damage. But you can see he is there to uh, force melee combat. Uh, now stuns this uh, squad and needs to run, run, run. See the damage uh, is. Moral damage um, mostly is really good. A lot of lot of cultists. You can see what they can do. He needs a dark library so they can get their cultist leader to get infiltrated. Almost loses the sorcerer. He's still alive. 
behind all these cultists here, left and right. Um, yeah, I wanted to show this replay in particular to see, to let you see what um, cultists are capable of. They can just run around, have their awesome sounding weapons and deal a lot of damage. It's also still alive and regenerating HP, slowly. Just running, running and running. You can't uh, turn back but because the skulls will murder you and retreat. Um, and here a little oversight in the... One scout dies, so um, one cultist... Little nice uh, animation. One cultist costs 25 requisition, a scout costs 50, so you see, kind of see what um, the comparison is. Resource wise, he could go tier 2 soon ish, has upgraded 1 to 2 of his um, piston calls, um, upgrades the third. And there he goes tier 2. You see, one gen would be enough. But he now has some extra power on the plus side yes. to uh, to immediately build an occult forge. Should build a dark library right now because you get the resources back anyway. There we have it. Sound effect from the academy from Starcraft 1 I think. At least uh, sounds pretty similar. Sadly, the Silver Spire focuses on the company master, not on a marine. Could have probably killed a marine or two if it focused. Ah, he, he refocuses it even, which is nice. You can see here, it will lose. He will lose uh, a marine in the process. At least something, right? Can't do much uh, against it. He could have tried to cap this, but it's all already capped by some scouts or on the process of capping. Upgrades this Silver Spire is almost here too. Dark Library finishes as well, so you will have the resources to build an Occult Forge. Defense here, well. This is light cover. Can be interesting if the Marines stand here and shoot the Silver Spire from the light cover. The two is finished, he gets chosen gets the upgrades for the sorcerers. Um, all sorcerers and wizards of the Sars of Sons place powerful runes upon their armor. This gives them and chosen and all the, okay this also affects all the chosen units. Increasing health. Interesting. Really good. If you play chosen you need to get the, get the upgrades. Here we have the chosen, here we have the occult forge. The upgrade as I stated um, could also get probably the uh, Global upgrade for requisition, but would um, hinder his uh, playstyle a bit. Here we have the infiltrated um, cultists now, but the company master here inside the squad will detect them. Needs to get a thrall here to repair this. St stand in, in range. You can shoot from outside his vis vision range. Could also now go to the scouts here and shoot them. Gets the second one. Which gives some passive abilities that... Um, nullified um, spells. And protection against melee and range attacks. Gets a rhino. And has the chosen here now. Interesting that he also for the sorcerer the upgrade. Interesting that that he doesn't get uh, he doesn't have the warp gate. So the warp gate would have been um, better here. So he could get uh, one squad of Rurik Marines as well. You see the thousand suns. Something I forgot about has more um, space in transporting than standard rhinos. It's like warp magic. What it's that's how it's explained. You can explain a lot of things with warp magic. And we see here some melters on the marine squads. We have three marine squads now, so this is becoming ugly for the thousand suns. Would need a um, this was the minor bolt, which does not nothing against um, 
infantry, you would need something to uh, send in slight cover like Rubin Marines and whatnot to fight his back. Having some infiltrated uh, cultists is also nice and he tries to uh, uh, harass the enemy base with um, Chosen now. Actually going for the HQ and dealing a surprising amount of damage. Um, we'll need to use the abilities here. Does he re No, he does not get any abilities here. The fight here is Saurus against KPR. Here we have some scouts. He needs to focus the scouts now because they're dealing a lot of damage. The scouts will break the morale and whatnot. Has the ability to um, do some damage here. Kill the tech servitors. So the damage against the fortress is really high. You see here the chosen are kind of able to kill enemy um, HQs but um, Morale now gets broken and they can't do anything. So, really nice attempt from GPR. You can see what um, a drop basically, <laughs> the charge of um, Chosen can possibly do if uh, enemy is unaware. But in the end, he lost too much in the beginning. Um, too much in the beginning. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not a spell that triple your morale, the, the morale armor is uh, just really low in the chosen one. So it's a GG in the end, um, Refiler wins this game after some mistakes in the build order and um, little uh, execution errors from GPR. But you can see it was close in the end. If uh, Refiler would have um, reacted a, a little slower or if a gap would have had a better early game, he have would have all the chances to win games. Um, yeah, as I, I told you before, the Thousand Suns are best in these one-on-one -on -one scenarios on mediocre-sized maps, so they can use all of their abilities. Okay, with that, I want to finish this guide. If you, as always, if you have some thoughts in it, like if I forgot something, if I told something wrong, if I need to explain something more in detail or if I forgot something, write it in the comments. Um, yeah, as for always, thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.